taking pictures. Oh, you have a longer arm. Can you press this? This one? Yeah. Get in, get in. Do it. Uh, do it again. You know that first time we met, we discussed what? selfies. Absolutely true story. I don't even remember. Um, yeah, I do. We were like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so there's two schools of thought. The first one is I will always tell people to bring their goal lower. So the minimum amount you can go for, the better. Um, just because of the psychology of the faster you hit your goal, the more successful you'll be. Um, so it doesn't mean that you put 2,000 as your goal and you're going to necessarily raise 2,000. Because 87% of campaigns that hit their goal will overfund by an average of 32%. So the kind of psychology behind it is get your 30% in, soft launch, don't tell anyone about it. And then when you announce it to the public, bloggers, journalists, your friends, like your wider circle, it'll already be kind of going and it'll have some momentum behind it. Um, but what you do need to make clear so that you don't kind of hit 2,000 and then everyone stops funding you is that you need to make clear that you, you do need more money. So you can do that by creating stretch goals. So when you're getting to like maybe one and a half grand, you can be like, this is amazing, thank you all so much. Like, this is great that you support us so far. Um, We've now put in stretch goals. If we can get 3,000, we'll do X. With 5,000, we can do this. Um, and then kind of approach it that way. Okay. So then people don't kind of see that you've reached your goal and stop funny because they're like, oh, right, these guys are done, they're fine. Right. Um, and as long as you kind of keep the momentum up and put new perks in, then it won't stop people funding. With a product, you're essentially, there's a pre-selling element to it, so you're pre-selling a product. Um, what I say to companies that don't have a product, or even kind of charities or um, social enterprises that don't have kind of clear, obvious perks to give away, just need to think as creatively as possible. So you don't want to be spending money on perks, because that money is being taken away from the yeah. money that you're raising. Um, so... You need to look into your network, like see the people in your community already, the people that are connected to you, see what you can offer. So if there's like a local coffee shop that would maybe donate 500 cups of coffee that you could sell as a perk for, you know, £10. So, you know, you're spending more than a cup of coffee, but it's like you're being a bit benevolent, giving someone, contributing to be part of the campaign, but you're also getting a cup of coffee, whatever. Or... Um, this kind of thing, like I mentioned, wristbands are really good because there's a huge, that. yeah. I That's mean, really cool. they one can be. 50, we, we estimate even probably less than one pound 50. Yeah, and if you can kind of speak to them and, you know, say, this is what we're doing, like, would you like to be involved? Maybe you could offer to have their branding as part of the Indiegogo page and say, you know, you're, these guys are supporting us, they're a local UK business, we're a local UK business, etc. They might give you a deal. Um, and, the, yeah, the reason I kind of said the motivation behind that is because people will be funding this particular campaign because they want to feel part of this company, like the whole kind of we are CEO, very inclusive, collaborative feel. Um, so having a wristband like you go to a festival is re could be really powerful. You know, there's a lot of trends in terms of why people contribute. Um, and we've noticed there's four main reasons, there's four main motivations as to why people fund your campaign. The first one is people, so they know you, they're your friends, they're your mum, they're your dad, etc. Second one, passion. So they love the idea of a community and a communal business and um, having that power as well as or and or um, they love the drinks industry and they love they would love to be part of it. Third one's participation, which would be very heavily persuaded your 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 guys um, situation because they will literally be participating in every single decision. So they will, the reason people will be motivated to contribute is because they want to participate in the Agora. Yeah. And the fourth one is perks, which won't necessarily be that much of a motivator uh, because you don't have clear things that you can give away. So your campaign needs to be, um, we're Agora, we're a company built on community where everyone has voting rights and decisions in this company. Uh, we have created our first product, which is a beverage. Um, raspberry mint. Oh, can you can you say what it is? Yeah, it's raspberry mint. Oh, okay, mint. right, okay, so you can, okay. So yeah, you're yeah, not like being protected. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so no, they chose it. They chose it. They chose oh, okay, cool. So, it's open. Um, yeah, so we've, uh, yeah, we've created our first product, which is a raspberry and mint flavoured water. Um, and every single, and we're ready to go to production. Every single decision that has been made up to date has been made via our community and voted on democratically. We're now at the point where we need to reach that next stage, build our community and get to production and that's where we need your help.
Yeah. So it's a very clear message. It's very like, we've done this, 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 and this. Everybody's been part of this decision. You, I'm, we're now giving you the opportunity to get involved in our company and this community and make this beverage a reality. Because then I would get it. Then I would be like, oh, I get it. So they're trying to build this product. And not only would I get the product, but I'd get to actually be part of the company. Yeah. That's a much clearer message. Do you know what I mean?